Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Manim in Python and Manim stands for Mathematical Animation Engine and it's designed so that you can make math videos that explain different things and it's used to do precise animations and is famous because it's used by Shrewd Blue One Brown's Grant Sanderson. We're not actually going to look at the exact software he uses though, we're instead going to look at the community version because it's updated more regularly, it's probably got fewer bugs in and it gets more frequent updates. But if you want to use the exact software that he uses then you'll have to have a look at a different version of Manim. So you can see that in this introduction, I just had a title, which was some text that I put in a down position, and then the banner, which I created, wrote the title, expanded the banner, and then waited and put audio over the top. And to install, we need to use pip install manin, but you also need latex and ffmpeg, although you can see I've got that installed, and I've got the other libraries too. So the first thing we should do is create a scene, a new scene, and it has to be a class and it's going to be called main scene, and this inherits from scene, and then we put everything in the construct function, and we could just do nothing for now, so we can render our scene. So we use manim, and then I'm going to preview it when it's done, and I'm going to set the quality to low just so that it compiles quicker and the file is main.py and you see here it asks me for a list of scenes so I'm not going to do that I'm going to cancel it and just type in the scene name which is main scene afterwards and that means it's going to compile the main scene and you can see it's worked although there's nothing in the scene so uh, we should change that. So we're going to create a shape, which is a square, and a new shape, which is a triangle. And then we're going to play, create, shape. So it's just going to create the square. And to check it works, we can add another flag, this dash S, which will skip everything and just show us the last frame. And you can see we have this image here of a square. So uh, we can then get rid of the dash s and just preview the whole thing. And you can see there it creates a square. Then we can do some animations with the square, so we can rotate it, and I'm going to do pi divided by 4 radians, and then we'll play shape.animate.rotate.mp.pi slash 4, so we're going to rotate it another pi by 4 radians and preview it. So we create it, we rotate it, but if you watch the second rotation, you see that it doesn't actually rotate it. It just works out where it goes to, where it comes from, and then linear it interpolates in between. And we can make that even more obvious by rotating it pi by two radians, because that is a quarter square. So the first one rotates, but the second one definitely shrinks. And of course, to rotate it, pi radians, you'll see that it doesn't actually rotate in the second one. It just squeezes through the middle. And 
So generally using the main rotate functions are preferred. But what we can do is we'll add another shape. And this is going to be a triangle. And we're going to move it to the right of the screen for units. And then we'll play, play a thing that moves the shape to the triangle. So shape.animate dot move to the new shape and because when we're moving it doesn't really matter how everything happens because it just moves normally anyway it's not going to mess up the animation very much however it is worth noting that even though the triangle is there because we haven't added it to the scene, it doesn't appear. So we could do self.add triangle, which is our new shape. And this time, in fact, if I just make it render quicker by putting in the dash s, we can see what happens at the very end. Where we have a square and a triangle. And weirdly, the triangle has a different default color. So what I'll do is I'll say that the stroke color is white. And then we have two white shapes. However, what might be nicer than just having the triangle appear is if we fade it in from the shape so we can play a transform of the shape onto the new shape and you see if I preview with the skip that means that our square becomes the triangle and obviously that's not very clear unless we actually render the animation And there you can see the square became the triangle. And then we could add some more animations on to the triangle. So we might play say say that our shape, which is now the triangle, and uh, we're not playing with the new shape as we animate it, we're playing with the old one, and we'll set the colour to purple, and then we'll move it to its current position plus up times two so move it two units up then we can play shape dot animate dot move back to the origin and it should move around and change color And you can see that that has worked. And I always like to end scenes by uncreating everything so that you end with black. And then when you start the next scene, uh, if you put them together, they look very nice. So we'll uncreate our shape at the end. And we end up just as we started. And I could then change these settings. So for example, I could set the quality to high and render it, but it would take a bit longer because it's now running at 60 frames per second and with higher resolution. But instead, we can create a new scene. And this is going to be called a dot scene because it's going to have a dot in it. And so to do that, so to do that first, we create a construct method, which is going to be called we have a dot, which is a dot. And a title, which is a title dot. And so that it's not blank, we'll just fade in the title. And we'll set it to shift down. So now 
we have a different scene that is our intro scene and we can just check that only the title appears in the scene because we haven't added the dot by letting it render and you can see that it's writing something into the text directory and that's where we start looking at what's happening in this media directory that it creates so we have the images so this is the image of the scene the main scene when we last skipped and saved it then we have some text files which i'm not going to look at all of them but they are different text files that uh, contain the thing we're rendering and that's because i rendered the wrong scene so we can uh, instead render the dot scene which is what we were initially looking for and it should go and create some more text and then we have these texts here but obviously we can't view them in this editor so there we have our title dot and there'll be some media that contains latex of a dot and then we here we have our videos and we haven't created a video for this one yet so if I remove the s it will do that but we're going to end up with a video here we go dot scene which is going to play and you can see it just fades in the title but the next thing we want is a tracker and this is a value tracker and all this does is it stores a value and you might say why don't you use a variable and the answer is because when you're updating frames in a scene it's a lot easier to use value trackers and we'll add the dot and the tracker to the scene and this now means that the dot is going to be in the scene but the tracker isn't because it doesn't have a representation and if we put the dash s flag in you'll see that that's the case we just have the dot then we're going to add a, a function to the dot which causes it to update and it's saying each scene dot will be a dot that is going to move to the tracker dot get value so the value in the tracker times right so if the value is negative it moves left if it's positive it moves right and what we'll do is we'll play the tracker dot animate dot set value to minus six and we can preview that without skipping And you can see the dot moves left but uh, to make it a bit easier to watch we'll change the runtime to five and you can see the dot moves from the right to the left and it is worth noting that it slows down at the end but we can change that by setting the rate function to linear and we can set the runtime for this one to three so it takes a bit longer and maybe at the end we'll just set the value back to zero And of course there are a range of rate functions, it doesn't have to be just linear in the default. But then you have to import them from the rate function library, which is a bit more difficult. But you can see while the linear is good it does look a bit jerky whereas the other one is a lot more natural and then we can uncreate the dot and render the whole thing and maybe because it's something that I'm going to finish with I'll just make it medium quality so it's a bit nicer to watch
and there we go, we've created a few animations that do different things. Learn the basics of Manim, and of course there is so much more you can do depending on what kind of video you want to make. So hopefully if you want to do math animations in the future, this is a library you're going to use. You've got some understanding of how it works with the scenes and you'll be able to look at the documentation and see what else you want to add in the future. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you again same time next week. Till then.